Welcome to Bible Logos. My name's Laura Worcester and I'm your broadcast host. Today I cannot wait to present to you part three of the message entitled, Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing. Remember to like it and share it on social media with your friends and family. All right, get ready for part three of Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing. We walk by faith, not by sight. Well, who is we? Who is he talking about when he says we? Is that you? That's talking to believers, isn't it? Believers, how many believers do we have in the house today? The scripture says believers walk by faith, not by sight. Look at somebody and say, don't be an unbelieving believer. If you can see it, it's not biblical faith. If you need to see it first, it's not biblical faith. It's not God's way. Faith believes that it is so before you can see it. Faith believes it's so. Why? Because God said it. Somebody said that settles it. Somebody said that's enough. Faith agrees with what God says. Look at somebody and say, stop arguing with God. Remember John chapter 20? You remember Thomas Didymus? Somebody Remember somebody named Thomas Didymus? He was one of the disciples in the Bible. And they called him Doubting Thomas. I wasn't pointing at you when I was saying that. I was just, repeat, I was just repeating what you said because some people might think I was pointing at you. But Thomas was the disciple who, after Jesus had died and had been resurrected, he was the one who was still in unbelief. And so the scripture gives us to know that, that when the other disciple says, We've, Jesus is here, he's appeared to us, we're excited, he's, ri he's risen from the dead, just like he said. Thomas was the one who said, I don't believe that. He said, and then let, he went even further. He said, in order for me to believe it, I'm going to have to see him with my own eyes. I want to see the, the nail prints in his hand. I want to put my hand in the hole in his side. Isn't that what he said? He said, I need some evidence, some physical evidence that he's here. And for those of you who know the account and know the story, when Jesus showed up on the scene about a week later, he went to Thomas. And he said, Thomas, look at my hand. Check out the nail prints that are left and the scars that are left from the nail prints in my hand. Go ahead and thrust your fingers into my side. Then Thomas throws, he, 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 oh, my Lord and my, he, he has a Holy Ghost fit then. My Lord and my God. Jesus said, Thomas, he rebuked him. Don't be a disbeliever. Don't be an unbelieving believer. He said, you believe because of what you've seen. He said, but blessed are the ones who do not see and say believe. Faith requires you to see it before you see it. Recognize it before it manifests. See it in the spiritual realm because you're a spiritual being. How do we do that? Because we lock into what God said. God said it, somebody said, and that's enough for me. Come on and put your hands together. Give God praise. The third point we want to make about what faith isn't is this. Faith is not a, an, a mental exercise. Faith is not mental ascent. Faith is not mental belief. That's, those are mental exercises. Faith is not merely believing. Another Salah moment. Another Salah. Faith is not merely believing. But let me define what I mean by mental assent. Mental ascent is defined as the expression of agreement in the mind. Now, remember, we talked about a long time ago the trichotomy of man, and our mind is our soul. So it's the expression of agreement in the mind, but it has not yet reached the heart or the spirit. So it's a mental exercise. Do you remember Mary and Martha? Yes. Pastor Charlie said the M&M sister. They had a brother named Lazarus, yes. and Lazarus was known for being Jesus' boy. Yeah, he, was. he got to hang out with Jesus. Uh -huh. Jesus ate with him. Uh -huh. Jesus hung out with Lazarus. He, he went to their house, spent time with them. They had an intimate relationship with him. And so the Bible tells us that when Lazarus was sick, they sent word to Jesus to let him know, your boy Lazarus is sick. 
expecting that he would come immediately to heal him. But the Bible says Jesus waited till he died because he wanted to prove something to him. You know, Jesus will wait till things die to prove stuff to you. Sometimes we're wrestling with God and God do it now and Lord let it happen now and God I want to see it now and God will wait till it die in order to prove something to you. And so Jesus waited until Lazarus died before he showed up. And so Mary, one of the things that she said to him is that if you had been here, our brother would not have died. And Jesus' response to that, well first she said, but I know, she said, if, you've been, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But I know even now. See, that's where the, that's where the mental ascent comes in, because that's how we talk. I know even now you're able to do something about it. Because I know, she said to him, I know that if you just ask the Father, he'll do something about it. Jesus' response, response to her was that, do you know who I am? Welcome back. Isn't that a powerful word? Don't miss tomorrow when we come back with part four of the message, Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing. I need you to do me a favor, like it, and share it with your friends and family. I'm Laura Worcester, and I want you to remember that the sower sows the word, and therefore it is with the same measure you meet that it shall be measured unto you again. <laughs>